uh, started uh, setting up the notebook and uh, um, few of you had issues and uh, this was sorted out, right? So um, I'm hoping that uh, others will also soon set it up um, because what we are going to do in this uh, course is uh, all of your uh, lectures are delivered through the notebook, right? So I can print a PDF and upload the PDF uh, of the lectures, but uh, that's not really going to help you understand the concepts. You really have to like boot up the notebook and interactively explore the notebook, right? Um, I'm going to start presenting and uh, I will try to um, I think you should be able to see my screen. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want you to um, look at is uh, the actual website. Right. So um, please go through what is on the website first, um, because uh, my recommendation is that uh, there are lots of information in there. Um, which uh, you might or might not have had a chance to look. Um, so have a look. In particular, uh, there is a Slack channel, uh, which is listed here, right? Do join uh, the Slack channel, because uh, that is where I'm usually hanging out, right? So I'm looking at the Slack channel, uh, and uh, there are a bunch of uh, people here. Uh, how many people are here? Some 30 odd people are here now. Sorry, 48 people are here now. Um, so which means that uh, 30, 20 or people are missing, right? So I highly recommend if you are not there, uh, do join the Slack channel. OK, so uh, the reason is that um, Slack is generally better for uh, um, interactively asking questions and getting it resolved rather than Moodle. Moodle is uh, quite, um, it's not great for uh, asking programming questions. There are a bunch of uh, things that you can do in Slack. And I also usually use Slack for work. So I am there, right? So um, one recommendation that I would uh, have is uh, um, don't DM me all the questions, right? Don't send me a direct message if the question is uh, not of personal nature, right? If you have questions regarding, say, some syntax or um, some um, some code that you don't understand, just post it under uh, like hash general or I'll create another channel for uh, OCaml help. So do post it there, right? So that uh, other, uh, your friends and uh, classmates can also uh, sort of benefit from the conversation. I mean, you have lots of interesting questions, right? So if the conversation is interesting, perhaps the others will also be um, useful. So one thing uh, I should mention is there is a, uh, a uh, channel called the uh, notebook setup, right? Um, and this channel is uh, really meant for uh, you to get uh, the notebooks, your notebook setup. We've been answering a bunch of questions. I mean, there have been a few conversations here, and my TAs are also on this uh, channel, right? So if I'm not responding, they would respond. So I highly recommend the rest of the people who have not joined to join Slack, ask questions, right? And uh, and then make sure you're set up, right? If you're not set up and you're saying, uh, I don't have this setup, so I can't submit an assignment, I'm not be going to be able to help you because uh, um, I mean, I've been mentioning it in every class uh, so far. And you will also learn a bunch of tools, right? So which, um, which are the tools that you're definitely going to use if uh, you end up working in a company or doing research, right? So. Um, think of this as a good excuse to learn uh, some of these tools. Um, we don't have a course that uh, sort of teaches you uh, these sort of tools, but uh, I don't think this would work as a good course, right? So having a having an interactive experience going through this and um, using these tools in practice sort of helps you get familiar with uh, a lot of concepts that are going on here, right? Um, okay, so yeah, so one thing I should say is this whole course website is also just part of uh, this GitHub repo, right? So um, all of the uh, stuff for the website is also here. 
i basically want you to focus on uh, um these four commands right and there are and there are two two tools that we are using here first one is git uh, and the second one is docker um to just give a one line uh, intro to both of these tools uh, um it is a distributed version control system right so uh, what this means is uh, it's a way of uh, um storing your software artifact and uh, developing your software artifact um locally but also um collaborating with others who might be on the internet right so um so this is a really good uh, system i mean this is like the def de facto system today right if you want to do any sort of programming um any um thing that you want to work on i mean i i keep my papers uh, in git and all the software uh, repositories are in git so git is something that you really should know right so it will save you lots of trouble um so i lived in a world before git right so where uh, you wrote a program you create a version 1 and then you change it keep version 2 keep version 3 version 4 version 5 and so on right so you manually copy the files and uh, keep doing it this is a really bad practice right git sort of uh, makes it very clean um so yeah so if you don't uh, know git um you don't need uh, many commands for uh, git in this course we are not going to ask you to do anything funky um but all you need to do i'm going to try to uh, do this from scratch right so um so let me get my terminal window here so this is going to be a very opinionated uh, git uh, uh workflow uh, that i'm going to show obviously this is not going to cover uh, everything that git can do okay so let me make it bigger so can someone confirm that you can see my screen you can yes sir we can see okay okay good uh, so yeah you just type git and it will show you some commands right and uh, so what i this particular command what it does is it just clones this repository right i'm using github github is again the de facto place where all of the git repositories are stored it is free right so i highly recommend you um creating a github account and uh, playing around with it for your own courses uh, let me just check the messages okay so fine um yeah so okay so let's let's just do this first i I really don't have a plan, so I'm thinking on the feet. Um, so let's see what uh, do poke me with questions, right? So uh, I might be doing something which is uh, irrelevant for you, but uh, do ask me questions. So what we are going to do first is uh, clone the repository. Okay, so Git clone um, sort of copies the entire repository. So what Git maintains is uh, Git maintains the current state of the repository, which is just files, right? And it also maintains enough metadata. to record uh, the previous history as well so everything that uh, you had previously uh, is also recorded in git um, so this is not magic right so this is uh, let's see so this is the files that i have but there are hidden files here so if you do ls a uh, you will see that there is a dot git directory right dot git directory if you cd into it you will see a bunch of things and uh, um this is git's uh, metadata that stores all of the previous versions okay so so i am i am in this uh, repository how do i know uh, i am even in a git repository you can just do git status uh, let me just uh, shrink it a little bit okay so if you do git status uh, what it's telling you is uh, um it is giving you the status of uh, the current repository right so it says that uh, um you are on this uh, concept called a branch right you are on the gh pages branch and your branch is up to date with uh, origin/gh/pages so um two concepts here right so git has this notion of uh, remotes so remote is uh, uh, essentially um a location which is not uh, the current working directory right which sort of contains the same uh, repository as you right so you can do git remote 
uh, minus v, which is verbose. If you sort of type it, you'll see that uh, um, we have a single remote called uh, origin, which is where we cloned the repository from, right? So I cloned it from this location. So this Git remote is just the URL to that place. And Git also has this notion of, uh, so you can have multiple remotes, right? So if I'm say I'm collaborating with 10 other people, I will have say 10, I might not have 10 remotes. I might just have like two or three remotes, but uh, you can have multiple remotes, uh, um, as many remotes as you want, right? So that's the first concept. Remotes are sort of uh, like distributed locations um, where you can, uh, where you have the same copy of the repository. It also has a notion of branches. A branch is, uh, um, think of it as a copy of, an efficient copy of your local state. Right, branches sort of, uh, so if you do git branch, it says that there is a single branch. Uh, what it means is that uh, um, your local repository has a single uh, version, which is GH pages. You can of course create new branches. Um, you can, I can of course create a new branch. So this is the command for creating a new branch. I'm creating a new branch called work in progress. So now if you do git branch, you will see that there are two branches and uh, um, and the current branch is GH pages, right? So you can switch branches by checking out uh, the branch name. Some of these commands are sort of um, not intuitive, right? So, um, but you will get uh, to get in touch with uh, what Git does uh, eventually. Um, and you won't even think about what you're typing. So I have a branch called work in progress, right? So now if I do git branch, I see that I'm in work in progress branch. So what is the point of having branches, right? So let's see uh, that I have this uh, readme file, right? So um, let's say I'm adding something here. Let's say um, this was added on the 8th of August. Okay, so I just, uh, wrote that line, I've committed it. So every Git branch also has a saved state and currently working state, right? If you do Git status, uh, I just do Git status. So Git status says that uh, I've modified this file, right? So I have modified uh, my readme file because I added that one particular line and uh, my, and this is not part of um, um, the saved state in a branch, right? So Git branch also has this notion of commits. So this has not been committed yet. So if you are aware of uh, uh, some awareness of databases, right? When you run database transactions, you sort of commit. And here is a sim similar idea. This is an uncommitted thing. So it just says that I've modified this file. The modifications are sort of uh, still hanging around, right? They are not committed yet. Um, the nice thing about Git is you can quickly see what you've changed. So there is a command called git diff. Right, if you type this, it says that uh, I've changed this readme file here, right? So um, readme file has been changed. And what was the addition? The addition was this one particular line, right? This is uh, really what I added now. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm just checking the Git branch again. I am in work in progress. So uh, just like databases where you start uh, saving the state, right? Git has this notion of a commit. Commit is uh, a sequence of commits actually is a branch. So I've made some changes. I want to ensure that the changes are saved. The changes are committed. And the way you do that is you do git commit. Um, and then you can uh, say whatever file has changed, add all of the files. So that is uh, minus A, right? And you can type a message minus M, uh, added a line in readme, right? Okay, so I've done this. I, if I commit it, it says that, okay, one file changed. There were two insertions because I added two lines. So if you do git status now, you will see that uh, there is nothing to commit, right? And the working tree is clean, which means that uh, all of the changes have been saved. Um, so one thing to notice is, uh, keep in mind is that all of these changes are local. Okay, so I've made this change just in the work in progress branch. If I change to say the GH pages branch, um, branch, 
to check out ch pages right and i look at my readme file you will see that the line is not here right so each branch is like a copy of the entire uh, uh, repo right repository and uh, what this uh, branch allows you to do is to say you have one version of uh, the program that you are working on you want to quickly try out uh, a new feature so you create a new branch you work on that branch the feature will keep developing and then at the end of it you can say um, okay i am happy with this feature now you can sort of save this feature into the main branch but what we see here is the main branch which is the gh pages branch does not have the changes in fact you can even diff between branches so i am so now i am in gh pages branch right and i am sort of going to ask what are the changes between my current branch which is the gh pages branch and this work in progress branch so we know that the changes are uh, these two line additions right if you do git diff work in progress it sort of tells you um, the other way right so what it says is how do i get from work in progress branch to gh pages branch which is oh you just delete these two lines and you will get to the state that is available in gh pages branch right okay so this is a very quick uh, uh, intro to git i don't think you will even need to use all of this uh, uh, information okay so one thing i should say is uh, why bother creating branches uh, if you cannot uh, merge the branches together so of course i have uh, i have my master branch which is, which is sort of the uh, public version gh pages right and uh, i have this uh, other version which is uh, work in progress so what i'll try to do is to um, merge the changes from the work in progress branch into gh pages branch so the way to do that is this command called git merge so you can merge branches so you take the work in pro what it's saying is i am currently in github github pages gh pages branch right so git status gives me sorry git branch gives me gh pages so i am instructing git to say give me all the changes from work in progress branch and merge it into gh pages branch so i do git merge work in progress right now if you see that uh, it says uh, two lines have been added right and if you look at uh, this one you will see that uh, these two lines have been merged together okay now if i do git status so what this tells me is uh, uh, i want to branch github gh pages my local branch right is ahead of uh, the remote branch by one commit the commit is this addition right so i am one step ahead i have some local changes which uh, is ahead of uh, the remote changes and uh, you can obviously push this changes right so you can um, so one thing you want to do is to say i have my local changes i want to make sure that the changes are saved in github made available publicly on github so you do git push right so if you do git push uh yeah it needs it asks for a username mm. i have not loaded it with the uh, if you do git push it will go there right so let <laughs> take my word for it um i can try to yeah uh, i i don't think it's uh, it's that useful so anyway so you can do git push uh, what will happen is uh, your changes will uh, appear here why don't we do that if some if no one is asking questions i might just do that so let me clone the repository again so let me move this to something else um git clone git the so i'm cloning this again right i'm cloning a fresh copy so you can have multiple clones uh, each clone is just a repository right so i actually have two clones here this is the one uh, that we were working on just now and this is the new one and uh, so let me add a change here so let me do hello world so i have added hello world if you look at status uh, actually 
I'm using something which I haven't showed you. So you can just do git status, which tells me that uh, um, this readme file has changed. I can do git commit. Uh, all the files and the messages uh, and hello world. And then now I can do git push. So what is happening now is uh, my local commits are being pushed to GitHub. And this will be immediately reflected. Right, so hello world is here. So why am I telling you this workflow? This workflow is useful for you because uh, when you are working on assignments, right? So um, make sure that you integrate Git into your workflow because uh, um, you can avoid uh, all of the problems with losing code and not submitting and all of these uh, um, silly things, right? All of those will be uh, a non-issue for you. Um, and of course, uh, you can look at all of the history here. So if you look at uh, this one, You'll see that, uh, yeah, so this is my entire history. It also allows you to go back to previous version. I'm not showing all of that. You can read upon it. Basically, if you make a mistake, right, it keeps uh, all of the history around in an efficient way so that uh, you can go back to uh, a previous version if you wanted to. So that's the benefit of Git. And uh, the reason why we are using Git is a matter of convenience, right? So in this course, I'm using Git because uh, um, I keep developing the course. I add uh, new stuff and so on. I want a safe way to ensure that uh, my commits are uh, version controlled so that if I make a mistake, I can go back to a previous version. OK. Uh, OK, so that is uh, Git. Um, what else do we do? So, okay, so let's do Docker now, right? So we sort of looked at uh, what Git clone does. Um, so what is Docker? Docker is just a easy way of, uh, it's like a virtual machine, right? To a first uh, approximation, Docker is like a virtual machine, but uh, Docker allows you to, um, allows you to, it's a better way to, um, it's a lightweight way to run the virtual machine. It is also a better way to distribute the virtual machine. Okay. So I won't uh, expand beyond this, but that's the idea, right? It's it's like a really easy way to um, manage and deploy virtual machines. When you want to deploy hundreds of virtual machines, uh, uh, you don't want each of them to run VirtualBox, right? So Docker gives you a easy way to sort of start all of this uh, in the cloud and uh, work. Um, work there. Docker is also easy because uh, for a developer, it gives you a command line interface, right? So what, what do you mean by command line interface? We can just run this command and get a local virtual machine quickly running. Okay, so, um, so let's do this thing, right? Um, yeah, okay, so I am on a, I have a MacBook. Right, so this is uh, this is running MacBook, and uh, let me cd to lectures, which is what I have mentioned here, and I'm going to run this command. So there are there are a bunch of things in this command, right? What I'm saying is, uh, oh, Docker, which is uh, a service which is in, which is running here, right? I have a thing called uh, Docker Desktop, uh, which is an app for Mac, which is running here. Um, yeah, so actually, yeah, so one thing I should mention is uh, Docker Desktop is, uh, and Docker for Windows is, uh, um, are two applications where OCaml is extensively used internally. Um, so this, this might not be obvious here, but uh, if you look at uh, the license agreements, I think I can find Oops. Anyway, so you can have a look at the license agreement. There will be a bunch of OCaml uh, licenses in there. So, OK, so what do we want to show? Uh, I want to show that uh, how Docker works. So here is, um, here is another window. Let me go here, CD to lectures. Um, Okay, so 
I am in the lectures uh, directory. Now I, this is my command, right? What is the command saying? Docker run this uh, Docker uh, image, right? So Docker is also sort of um, a nice way to manage multiple images together. So Docker has this notion of two notions, right? Docker has this notion of images, which are sort of uh, um, like virtual machines that have been suspended. Right, so suspended virtual machines and uh, containers, which are uh, instances of uh, that particular virtual machine. So you can have, say, um, one virtual machine, one virtual machine image, right, which can be um, ten instances of which can be started. So there is a notion of image, which is like a passive thing, and there is a notion of uh, um, containers, which is an active thing. So given a single image, you can have multiple containers running. So in order to look at uh, what images you have, you can do Docker images. Actually, on this machine, I only have one image, right? Um, and uh, that's the image name. The tag is latest. And uh, it was created nine days ago. And uh, it is occupying 4.17 gigabytes uh, of uh, disk space, right? And Docker containers can be um, looked up by this uh, Docker ps command. So ps is the command uh, that you use in Linux, right? You can sort of look at what processes are uh, running. Similarly, Docker ps tells you what containers are running, right? Um, I only have one container running. This is the container that I'm using for the course. So it's running in, it's, it's running here, right? So that's the container that I see. The container has an ID, right? And it tells you which image uh, it is running currently what command uh, is running, right? And uh, how long has it been running? And there are two things here, which uh, is probably useful to note. So it says something about port and there is a name, right? So you can, uh, the port is sort of, uh, I mean, that comes back to this command again. So when I type this command, um, I'm running this image to create a new container, right? To create a live instance of this image. Right, and I have two commands here. So I say p eight 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 eight. So what this says is, um, um, when you run this uh, container, you take the port uh, uh, eight 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 from the container and map it to the port eight 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 on the host machine, which is my MacBook. Right. Um, essentially, what it means is, uh, if I send a packet or uh, wait on a packet uh, on my eight 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 then I will get the packets that are sent or uh, received by uh, whatever process is running inside the container, right? So we map, uh, we map this uh, port from the host to the container. And the reason why we do that is uh, we are going to run a um, Jupyter uh, instance inside the container, and we want to use our browser on our host to access the notebook, right? This is a command line only interface. Docker is usually command line only. It doesn't give you a, a UI. So that's why we are mapping this port. And the second thing that we are doing is mapping volumes, right? What does that mean? It means that uh, uh, we are uh, mapping a local directory, which is my present working directory, to the directory called slash lectures within the container. OK, so whatever changes I do, uh, on the host or on the container will be reflected. Why do we do this? I want uh, my local copy, the current copy on my host machine, my MacBook Pro, to be reflected in the container. The container is Ubuntu 2004, right? So it gets reflected there. There's a lot of, if you sort of think about it, uh, and if you are aware of file systems, there's a lot of magic going on here. How do you transfer? Uh, because there are different styles of file systems, right? ext4 and Mac has its own file system, and there is NFS. Um, so you have to sort of translate all of this uh, over. There is um, there's a bunch of very smart operating system things going on in Docker, just sort of to kindle your uh, interest, right? There's a lot of cool systems research here, but the high level takeaway is uh, you just map uh, these folders, right? So if you look at uh, this folder, I have a bunch of files here. And if I run this Docker command, uh, it's already running. So let me terminate the other one. Sir, does Docker work on Windows 10 Home? 
I don't think it works on Windows 10 Home, unfortunately. So I have a virtual box image uh, that is uh, available. So that a virtual box image is here, right? So um, it's a bit silly because you are installing virtual box, which inside uses Docker. But anyway, that's the method I would uh, recommend uh, using. Uh, OK. Uh, yeah, Windows Home is here. OK. I'm just reading the messages on, on uh, the chat. I, If you are enthusiastic, go try it out. Right? So I think uh, this is going to be a little bit of fun. But if it doesn't work, you can always fall back to the virtual disk image, right? Virtual box, box disk image. Um, if this sort of stuff interests you, go go wild, right? So I think this is going to um, this is going to this is going to give you lots of fun. So you will learn a lot of things about operating systems and how things work and so on. So try it out. Anyway, so if that doesn't work, you can always fall back to this uh, image. Right. Um, OK, so let's go back to where we were, which is um, here. So the reason why this failed initially is I had another uh, instance running. So I'm going to terminate that instance so that this. Uh, so if I do Docker PS now, you'll see that nothing is running. Right. The earlier something was running. Now nothing is running. So let me run the command again. So this time it will work. Right, so now I am in uh, um, inside the container, so you can yeah, look at view name if name. So it says Linux, right, and Linux Kit. So um, we are inside uh, uh, the Docker container, and in particular, if you look at uh, this, uh, we have the same uh, folder structure that's been mapped, right? So which was uh, the same on the host, and that's the benefit, right? So um, you locally have some changes, and we are sort of mapping it there. Um, and you can now start Jupyter Notebook. So I'm starting a Jupyter Notebook, and I'm mapping this uh, um, to 0000. Essentially, it maps it to the local host. Um, and uh, this gives you a URL. Because we mapped 8888 to our host port 8888, this is going to be reflected. Right, so that's the that's the funda there. If you run this, uh, you'll see. Um, oh yeah, uh, how to terminate? Uh, you can you can press Control D and terminate. I I honestly don't know whether OCaml is available on Google Colab. I haven't used it. I would be very surprised if it were available. Okay, so that's my uh, take on it. Find out. I, I, I have no idea. So OK, so anyway, so this is running now. You can play around with it. So the point is, if you if you save stuff on it, right, we are we are in a we are working in a container, right? So these are ephemeral things. So whatever uh, stuff that you do inside uh, the container um, is meant to be te temporary, right? So they will go away after the container is uh, uh, terminated, unlike a virtual machine, which sort of saves its state all the time. So if you create a um, file in any directory that is not mapped to um, the home directory. So we are mapping exactly one directory, right? We are mapping present working directory to slash lectures. If I sort of uh, create any other file in the container um, in a directory that is not mapped to the host, the files will be gone uh, when you terminate the container. OK, so that's the key thing. And uh, we are doing this uh, mapping. Precisely because I want to show you something, I will write new lectures here. But the changes will be saved in uh, my host directory. For example, I'll just do one simple thing, right? So let me say, I'm starting up. So let me change this. Uh, so if I run this, it's interoint, right? Let me change this to one point. So float or a float. I'll save this. OK, so the thing to take away here is let me, I am still in this lectures directory, right? And uh, if I do git status, hmm, which directory am I in? Um, 
sorry so this is save okay and uh, okay so let me close this one first of all okay so let me see. shut this down right this doesn't have git right so but if i terminate the container and then say git status you can see that uh, the container is gone right docker ps no container is running but the file changes have been saved locally so git status you and no uh, tells me that this is changed and if i do git diff you can sort of see that uh, i've changed the code right so some execution count has changed the type that we saw has changed right and uh, i had something earlier that has also changed so this is uh, I mean, this is the benefit of uh, doing this uh, port mapping, right? So, sorry, the volume mapping. So that uh, um, if you work on your own, uh, if you work on your own uh, um, notebook locally, right? You edit your solution, um, the changes will be saved locally, and then you can commit it and do whatever you want with Git again. Uh, so, uh, if we try try out things and save in the container. Uh, will they go away when you do git pull? No, they won't, right? So they won't overwrite. Um, only if you have conflicting changes will you, uh, I mean, even then git will complain uh, there are some conflicting changes and they won't, it won't be overwritten. So don't worry about that. I think uh, um, it will tell you, right? If you force it to say, pull me still, it will, bad things can happen, but you can, you can always, uh, um, it won't overwrite anything, right? It is very, very careful about uh, overwriting. OK, so what else do you have? See, the, uh, I don't know about uh, this collab uh, OCaml thing. So, but, uh, but the thing I want you to um, recognize is uh, this. We will be using uh, Jupyter Notebooks for uh, assignments as well. So even if collab, uh, uh, Google Collab has OCaml support, uh, we are going to use uh, um, Jupyter Notebooks, right? And the reason is that I can I can actually uh, do auto grading because there is a module where you can do auto grading in Jupyter Notebooks called NB Grader, and that is what I'm using internally. It has it is very it is very useful. So you sort of have like a, a box where you fill in the code. Test case is right underneath, and you just submit me the notebooks, and I can run um, everything in a everything in the same workflow. So um, so yeah, so you do need to work on uh, Jupyter Notebooks for this uh, semester at least. Uh, okay, so what do we have? So we have uh, changed something. So what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm on GH pages, so I'm going to commit these changes. Some changes. I'm going to push this, right? Whatever changes I push will be reflected. So there were some changes upstream which have not been downloaded. So I do git pull. Sorry, I went too fast there. The point is I did git pull, which got just like push is taking local changes and uh, sending it to the remote repository. You can pull changes from the remote repository to your uh, local repository. Actually, git pull is some command that you will use all the time, right? So I have only, what, five lectures uh, put up so far. But if you want to get the latest lectures, you just go to your uh, um, clone of the repository and then do a git pull. You'll get all of the local, uh, all of the new changes. And that is how you're going to get uh, new lectures and also assignments, right? What I will do for the assignments is uh, I will add the assignments to, I think I had a, I'll just add uh, a folder called uh, assignments and then keep adding assignments there. In order to get the assignments, you can just do a git pull. And you will have a local copy of the assignments. You just work on it. And for submission, you take that single file right, and upload it to Moodle. I'll tell you how that works when the time comes. But uh, that is how you'll be using. I do not know whether you'll be pushing at all, but you'll certainly be pull pulling. right? Pull is certainly something that you'll be doing a lot in order to get the latest updates. OK. Um, so my branch is ahead of this thing by two updates, okay. 
so let me go back and delete this thing just so that um have developed this um, habit of having useful um, commit messages right when you come back and you have to go back to uh, your uh, old old code commit messages help you a lot right so and then git push and the changes will be there okay, okay so uh, i think we have like 10 minutes so i'll i'll sort of uh, like not do anything more because i think i've covered uh, most of the things uh, here so if you have questions uh, now is your time to ask questions uh, uh, sir uh, yeah sir i uh, when i was running the docker container and i just closed it without uh, exiting like and then okay. now uh, now i don't know how to uh, terminate that okay so uh, so if you close it can you do docker ps yeah if i do docker ps there's one thing running yeah so you can do docker kill um again there is always help right so docker kill signal so docker kill uh, sick kill in operating systems is 9 right and you just give the name of the container so the last thing will be some stupid name right some uh, jumpy rabbit or something like that so you just copy paste that uh, and it will kill the container okay thank you sir. yes so uh, good interruption i think this is a good question you will come across this often so the port will be bound you don't know where that other thing is so you can just kill it okay so i'm getting an error about not being able to connect to docker daemon um is docker running uh, so typically your thing should be running if you are on mac uh, you should have docker desktop running um i think on linux there is something similar um uh, which operating system are you on venkat rahul linux okay so uh, yeah <laughs> i'm just going to google it because i don't know uh so yeah so you can so you need to do this right i think there is a sudo service docker uh, uh, status that will tell you whether uh, the docker uh, uh, daemon is running or not uh, there are two things you can try one and you need to start docker daemon okay um try that so if you have other questions which uh, you have not resolved my recommendation is go here to slack something called notebook setup to ask uh, questions there uh, okay so next question sir yeah. so how do we set up ocaml kernel in jupyter notebook are you trying to set it up from scratch yes sir okay so, so uh, i have a clean installation of uh, jupyter notebooks so okay hmm so one thing with uh, docker that i forgot to mention is um, um it has a very nice format for uh, creating the images which is uh, just a bunch of commands so if you go here in the repo uh, there is a folder called underscore docker there is a file called docker file okay that is going to show you how it is actually set up so um so you've done installation of jupyter right actually you need to do all these commands right you need to do a bunch of these commands is that is that uh, clear i can point you to this repository so um ocaml jupyter kernel if you just search for it this is the kernel that i'm using so where am i supposed to run this commands so you need to do this you need to sorry where are you su like supposed to run this oh, yes you sir. just if you are setting it up on linux uh, you just run it on linux right on your host okay. this is not docker right so actually this is so if you if you sort of uh, look at uh, all of this right this is the entire uh, 
a set of commands that i run on a fresh uh, um fresh linux uh, ubuntu with something else right but basically that's that's that these are the list of commands so if you have any question about uh, how i am setting this up you can have a look at this okay so the ocaml kernel itself is here in this uh, ocaml jupyter kernel and that has instructions for creating the jupyter kernel right and then installing the jupyter kernel okay so next question naman sir i uh, tried this so in this particular one uh, when i was uh, executing the second instruction opam install jupyter it mm. was saying that it uh, there is no uh, switch set uh, setup I oh i think no uh, i i believe that uh, so this is because uh, ocaml has a package manager okay so you need to um i'll just point you to this thing because i don't want to confuse all of the other people so the thing that you need to do is uh, this one um so i think you've installed how did you install opam did you install opam I installed Open using maybe distribution. This distribution oh distributions. Open, right? Okay, okay. So oh. my recommendation is uh, install it using this command. So if you just uh, um, Google for uh, Open setup, right? So it will get you to install Open link, and there there is this uh, single command called uh, curl and uh, install. So this will get you the right uh, installation. Okay, so this will install the latest version, which is four uh, ten compiler. So the version of uh, Opam that is in the uh, that is distributed uh, with the Linux distributions are quite old. Okay, so this is how you set up Opam. Try it out again. If you have any other questions, uh, we can always sort it out uh, on the on the chat. I'll I'll usually hang around there, right? So I'm I'm there now, so we can continue there. Okay, so I have uh, I have two minutes. So keep the questions going. So if we we don't have time, then we will continue there. Okay. More questions? Okay. It looks like um, I think we are uh, we have exhausted the questions for now. Of course, you will have lots of questions. Think about this as an excuse to learn all of these tools, right? So uh, last year we ran this uh, um, thing for uh, just teaching a few of our uh, uh, professors uh, ran this thing for teaching Git and Docker and um, Bash scripts and editors and so on. So think of this as an excuse to learn some of the tools that you might not have played around with. These are going to be quite handy, right? Whatever you do in the future. Right, so these these sort of uh, tools will be handy, um, and this is not going to be. I'm going to ask you questions on any of this, right? So this is not. This is outside of uh, all of that. But hopefully, this will sort of inspire you. There is a lot of. If you are interested in systems, there is a lot of cool stuff that is going on with uh, Git and Docker and all of that. Um, yeah, so it's it's these are sort of incredible pieces of software that have been made to work. Uh, and all of this is open source, right? You can go and read Git source code today. And the best Git book I found is uh, there is a book called Git book. So yeah, this is freely available. So this tells you everything and anything and everything about Git, but this might be a bit uh, too uh, deep. So Stack Overflow is what I do all the time. Git is sort of this magical thing. It is very powerful, but it's also a little bit confusing for um, uh, the beginners, but uh, if you have any questions about Git or Docker or any of these, right, please use the Slack channel, right? So either I will answer or my, my TAs will answer. I'll be happy to answer anything and everything, right? So it doesn't need to be particularly with this. If I think something is uh, um, something is not going to be useful, I'll just tell you, right? So, uh, but don't hesitate uh, for asking questions. It, only if you ask questions will you inspire me. Otherwise, I'll just tell you something in canned responses and just walk away. Anyway, so we are one minute past time. So I highly recommend you to try this out uh, over the weekend and early next week. 
i will have an assignment zero okay so what i will do is i'll just have like a hello world program that you just need to write hello world and submit and that is uh, sort of a forcing function to get all of you to submit that assignment uh, maybe i'll give that one person mark to that assignment right so this one person for class participation so uh, make sure you submit it i'll just set a deadline which is comfortable for all of us you just literally have to write one line right so i'll i'll even tell you what the line is but go through the process of setting this up and submitting okay so i'll stop there thanks very much bye bye